As a software developer, I bet this is something that you've encountered at some point in your career. So imagine that you're working on a project and you're responsible for some portion of the delivery of that project. Now in your team, you are currently a junior member and there are more senior software engineers on the team working with you. So as you're navigating the parts that you're responsible for in the project, you're also asking the more senior members of the team for input, asking questions for clarity, just so that you can make progress on the portion that you're responsible for. Now something that occurs while you're working on this project is that you're building up expertise that's very relevant to the portion that you're responsible for. And then this situation happens. You end up having a conversation with someone more senior on the team and right away they end up saying very confidently that something that you're assuming is incorrect or they have a different approach that's better for the thing that you're trying to do. And because they're more senior, you just end up swallowing your pride. You take their word as the absolute truth because they're the more senior software engineer and you go ahead with the approach that they're suggesting. I wanted to make this video because it's very relevant to a conversation that I had recently, and I thought that it would be useful to explain how to navigate something like this when you're dealing with more senior software engineers. And this is actually regardless of how junior you are. So you could be a senior level software engineer kind of speaking up to a principal level or staff or however the levels work at your company, but it's really focused around this idea of being able to speak and navigate conversations with more senior members of the team. So the example that I gave in the beginning of this video can play out in a bunch of different ways, and obviously certain things can be more extreme in some cases. You might have interactions that seem like they're a little bit aggressive or someone's frustrated with you, you know, being the more junior person. They could actually be not frustrated at all, and they're just kind of saying, nope, dismissing your thoughts and just trying to move things along, right? So this can look a bunch of different ways. This feedback and uh, this guidance is supposed to be generic, so I just want you to consider that, that I obviously can't apply this to every possible variation of it, but just something to think through as you're navigating something like this. I think it's important to acknowledge that we can't actually control the way that others interact with us we can only respond to it. So if you have situations where there's more senior members of a software engineering team that you're working with being dismissive of ideas, that's really unfortunate. And I think that there are, of course, ways that you can have conversations with them to let them know how you're feeling. I think that their manager should be able to help navigate that type of thing with them, kind of coach them to not have situations like that in the first place. But as much as someone tries to focus on improving those other things, in the end, it's sort of outside of your control how other people behave. And that means that ultimately it comes down to how we respond to these types of things. So even if you have someone on your team that you're working with and you end up building a better relationship such that they don't end up dismissing your ideas a lot, on a future team or new team members or whatever, there could be situations where this comes up again. So I think, yes, of course, we want to find ways to be preventative. That might not necessarily be up to you, but yes, you can speak with people to try and improve that. But the reality is, and the point that I'm trying to get across here is that I think as much as we want to do that, there's also this idea of trying to be prepared for conversations like this in the future and how you can respond to that. Most of the time, I don't think that people do this type of thing where they're dismissing your ideas or just trying to, you know, move things along and ignoring what you're having to say uh, as something that's malicious. I honestly don't think that's the intent. And I think for the most part, people don't realize they're doing something like this and having a negative side effect on you, especially as someone that's more junior. And what's even more challenging is that if we think through that scenario I was explaining in the beginning, there are situations where as a more junior developer or more junior member of the team, that you are gaining specific knowledge that might actually be counter to what someone more senior is having to say. And you're faced with this bit of roadblock where you're like, well, they're saying something, I don't agree with it because I feel like I just learned about this other thing, read the code, saw how it was working, whatever, and it's really at odds with what they have to say. But they're more senior, I guess I just have to trust them. And I think one of the best things that you can do in a scenario like this is ask questions. And how we ask questions is actually the really important part here because you can do something where you're asking questions and it actually makes this feel even worse. So to explain what I mean by that, if you have someone more senior on the team that's saying, hey, like, no, like, we're not doing that. Here's the path forward or that information's not correct. Here's here's the reality of the situation, right? And you have to kind of take this as the truth because they're more senior. 
if you just ask them questions and it makes it sound like you're just challenging what they have to say, odds are they're probably going to get more defensive. This is kind of like a human nature thing where when you're questioning someone's like intelligence, right? They're like, or questioning their factual information, people automatically want to defend what they have to say because it's something they believed was true. So while that might be a natural response, there's something that we can do to change how people react to that. And I think the way that we do that is by genuinely being curious. So when you go to ask questions back to someone that's more senior, so they're proposing something that's at odds with what you agree with, you can say, hey, like, that's actually pretty interesting. Could you explain why something is faster? Could you explain why that part of the code base has been a challenge? Or can you explain and just dig into their reasoning, right? Because a lot of the time this is challenging because they're not providing the reasoning. It's sort of like, here's something I know, I'm more senior, let's keep moving. And the act of questioning and trying to seek to understand can get them to explain their thought process, can start offering up where they actually believe they have some evidence, and this can lead to some more very interesting conversations. So in this particular case, it might be something where this person actually uncovers some other details that you were totally unaware of, right? And then this kind of goes back to, okay, they're the more senior person. They happen to have some extra information. I wasn't aware of that. Perhaps they are right. In which case, cool. No hard feelings. You tried doing something. You were learning. And they had some extra information. Now you know it. And you can both progress forward as part of this project. The flip side to that is that the other side actually has the learning. So as you're navigating this conversation, seeking to understand, and the more senior person gives you some data points, you might actually be able to say, hey, I was looking at this and I actually uncovered that this code path isn't even used, or we actually ran some tests and this is faster, or whatever it happens to be, right? So you might have some data that you can bring to the table that is counter to what they're aware of. And again, the goal of this is not to be like, ha ha, you're wrong, I'm right. Like, I am I know way better, so, like, <laughs> let's move along with my solution. But it's really all about aligning expectations and making sure people are on the same page. So what should happen, hopefully, is that with some new information, I would say most good software engineers would say, oh, interesting, okay, let's reevaluate and readjust. It may not mean necessarily that they jump right into the solution that you're offering, but they might reframe things and then go back to the drawing board with you with this new data to come up with a path forward. And I think personally, that's a huge win because now you've brought up to speed other people and you can work together on a better solution going forward. Now, another way that this type of conversation can pan out is based around the phrase that's very dangerous, but we've always done it this way, right? So if you have more senior people on the team saying, well, you know, we can't do that or this doesn't make sense because we've just always done things this way, that's a really interesting opportunity to shake things up. And again, when I say shake things up, I don't mean actually going in with the purpose of being disruptive and causing havoc and chaos, but I mean it's a good opportunity to actually change the way that people do things. And of course, like I was saying earlier, people are going to want to resist this because change is something that people aren't comfortable with. But you can use the same approach where you're asking questions to seek to understand and try to see if there's more things that you can uncover. So if someone's leading with, hey, we've always done it this way, and they kind of leave it at that, ask why. Like, oh, well, what was the reason that we introduced this in the first place? Start to uncover some of those reasons. It's not a matter of questioning why a design is a certain way or why something was implemented and trying to say like, oh, well, that's clearly wrong now. But understanding the original intent and understanding the original set of information that people had to make that decision can actually lead to a conversation where people are considering alternatives in the current state. And this is pretty cool because I've seen conversations that have happened at work over the past couple of years, multiple times, where someone has said to a more senior software engineer something like this. Hey, I was looking through the code and noticed that I think that we should be able to go down this code path. I think it's going to be more optimal. 
and I think we could try implementing this type of design to make this work. And the more senior software engineer goes, oh, well, no, you know, we've tried something like that in the past. It doesn't really work. And uh, we've kind of just always done it this way. And it, it seems to be fine. And then the person starts to question a little bit like, oh, could you explain like why we made that decision? And from there, after uncovering some things, what happens is that the senior software engineer is actually the person that comes up with the idea like maybe it is time for change. So as they're navigating, it's almost like rubber ducking, right? If you've heard of that phrase in programming, but as they're trying to explain things to you and be helpful and get you up to speed because you were genuinely trying to be curious and understand, they come to the conclusion themselves that, hey, maybe this assumption that we've had for X amount of time doesn't hold true anymore. Maybe it is time to revisit this. Maybe it is time for change. So to summarize the approach in this video, when you're trying to speak to more senior software engineers and trying to navigate this situation where because they're more senior, it kind of feels like they have the authority or the know all in this situation that you're working through. The idea that I'm proposing to you is to ask questions and seek to understand. I feel like the worst case scenario that happens here is that you learn something and you happen to be incorrect and that's okay because you're learning. And the best case situation is that the other side actually learns from you and you can move forward with the change that you're thinking about for the better of the project or the team. And this of course can be extra powerful in those situations where you have people saying, we've always done it this way because odds are something's been in place for potentially years and it's time to actually rethink how that works. So remember, we can't control how other people behave. That's okay, but we can control how we respond to that and try to move conversations forward in a positive way. So I hope you found that useful. I think that collaboration and teamwork is incredibly important in software engineering. So I hope that you can apply these type of concepts going forward. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.